Hey, go over here with a review of the 5 star standard light cones. You might have pulled one already like me on your standard pity or you might be saving your starlight to purchase one. So I'll be going through them one by one to determine their strength and their value compared to other light cone options. Remember to not take everything at 100% face value because future characters and content may love light cones that aren't as high value right now. And the light cone value will change depending on your account or your needs, and you might just want to choose one to equip on your favorite character. Though 30 pulls instead of a light cone is a strong option, it can get you towards a new character or a new limited light cone which are generally stronger. Anyway, let's begin with this review. Let's start with Knight on the Milky Way, the signature light cone of the lovely Himiko. It will give a 9% attack boost for every enemy on the field, up to 5 stacks. When an enemy's toughness bar is broken, the wearer gains a 1 turn 30% damage buff. This is obviously designed to synergize with Himiko's weakness break follow ups and is a nice light cone for her. How good is it though? 9% attack buff per enemy can amount to 45% attack buff, which is a pretty large amount as well as a 30% damage buff. Now this, without any conditions, is pretty cracked. However, both of these buffs are conditional and annoying to work around. In content versus 1 to 3 enemies, this attack buff will be a low 9 to 27%, which is equal to a 4 star light cone, and the weakness break condition is not that easy to hit, versus elite enemies. This will work best in farming content, where you'll face many waves of many enemies, or any future bosses that spawn a lot of adds, like the deer in Memory of Chaos. Any singular boss fights will make this light cone's value drop immensely. For a low spend option, we have Today is Another Peaceful Day. It's an amazing light cone for any erudition unit. It's a bit weak on the low energy ones, but it will give a permanent damage boost to the whole kit, depending on the wearer's max energy. Whilst S5 will take a while to get to, S1 already can give Himiko a 24% kit wide damage boost, with no conditions. For free to play players, we have the seriousness of breakfast. At an easy S5, it gives an unconditional 24% damage buff, which is already better than Milky Way's conditional one turn buff. For every defeated enemy, you'll get up to 3 stacks of 8% attack buffs, amounting to a 24% attack boost. Milky Way depends on enemies on the field, so if they go, you'll lose the attack percent buffs, whereas Breakfast would gain some. Meaning in longer fights, S5 seriousness just boasts better buffs. The only downside is that it has a lower attack stat than the 5 star. So I don't rate this light cone very highly, it's a bit sad and only excels in farming content faster, or any bosses with a lot of enemies. And farming content isn't really an issue right now, but it's still a great stat stick, but I wouldn't recommend buying it. Next up we have Clara's signature light cone, something irreplaceable, and on her this light cone is pretty irreplaceable indeed. It gives a 24% attack boost and 2 effects upon being hit or defeating an enemy, once per turn. The first effect is that it will heal the wearer by 8% of their attack, and the second effect is that it will increase their damage by 24% until the end of their next turn. Now again a perfect synergy to the signature character's kit. Clara will want attack hits in order to counter. The heal means she can sustain insanely well and the bonus damage percent is perfect as she will keep it during every counter and then her next turn giving it a 100% uptime if you're hit. For low spenders we have nowhere to run as the battle pass light cone. It will give the same attack boost to S1, but a stronger heal. This doesn't have the damage buff though, which is a really big buff. Now whilst this won't proc on taking a hit like Clara, it will proc each time you defeat an enemy and isn't restricted to once a turn. It's like a budget version, but very potent in other situations. The damage buff is still to be noted, but reliable kills on enemies makes this light cone an okay replacement, but something irreplaceable is definitely much better. For free to play players, we have On the Fall of an Ian and Woof Walk Time. On the Fall of an Ian is an amazing stat stick, stacking 16% attack per hit up to 64%, along with a 2 turn 24% damage buff when inflicting weakness break. For characters that can shred toughness bars, this will provide much more value and damage at S5 than Clara's at S1. Clara, in my opinion, will still prefer something irreplaceable for its irreplaceable healing benefit and the easy damage buff. Woof Walk Time, is the other free option and it's very conditional and only decent on hook and not as good as the free 5 star option. So to summarize is a great light cone and a really good purchase if you have and love Clara. The her to shop option is really amazing on her though too and will be S5 eventually so it's up to you and it's great on the rest the destruction roster. No one else can really abuse Clara's light cone except Arlen 
and the upcoming blade will prefer damage percent or HP percent light cones due to his kit scalings. Next up we have the Mighty Bronya's signature light cone, but the battle isn't over. I'd rate this as the second best light cone, but it drops if you don't have Bronya. This light cone will provide a nice energy regeneration rate buff and a skill point whenever you use an ultimate that buffs allies, once every two uses of the ultimate. This is one of the only sources of free skill points in the game and can proc quite often in a long fight. Not only that, it will give the next ally taking action a 30% damage buff for one turn. This is of course designed to synergize with Bronya's advancement forward and high skill point usage. This is a great utility light cone that is perfect for Bronya in a hyper carry role. This removes the energy rope requirement if you run Von Wack for her 4 turn rotation and even enables a 3 turn rotation, but I don't really recommend that. Free skill points to offset her skill point usage means that this is her best in slot. For others however, the next ally condition makes things a little weird. Unless you speed tune all your DPS to your sports speed, it won't proc reliably and CC can mess things up. Also as of now, Tingyun does a lot of basics and so does Asta in her optimal playstyle, so you won't be getting this effect very often. Skill point buff will always remain a nice bonus, but the energy regeneration rate is not as powerful as Meshin Cog's flak energy gains on Tingyun or Asta. For low spenders we have Carve the Moon with the Clouds, which focuses on a more team-wide spread of buffs. It's okay on all Harmony, but since Harmony will want to focus on their own regeneration a bunch, especially in some compositions, this can fall off. If you use two Harmony units in one team, then Carve the Moon can be excellent, but we have Dance 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 and Planetary Rendezvous as well. So Harmony really does have a bunch of great light cones. For free to play options, we have Past and Future, which is a stronger DPS version of Bronya's light cone, but way weak in utility. And we also have Mesh and Cogs and Chorus. Mesh and Cogs will provide the best energy gains among light cones for those who need it. And Chorus will provide a permanent small attack percent boost to the team, which is a free to play but weaker version of the Battle Pass light cone. So for Bronya hyper carry setups, best in slot would be this, and then Past and Future. If you love Bronya and want to boost her, you can pick this up, it is a very nice light cone. For the rest of the Harmony lineup, you don't really need it. Next is In the Name of the World, which is Welt's signature light cone. It will increase the wearer's damage to debuffed enemies by 24% and give their skill an 18% effect hit rate buff and a 24% attack increase. Since Night Healer units will always be debuffing enemies, this is pretty much a permanent 24% damage buff and this skill gets a nice hit rate and attack boost. Great for what slow and multi-hit skill to amplify its damage. However, this has proven to mislead some people that don't expect Hoyu vs Tricky wording. The way this Lycon works is that the attack and effect hit rate buffs open up at the start of the skill use and close right after. You can't buff your ultimates and abuse these buffs, and you can't do anything with it outside of your skill. So it's a deceptive little Lycon, it doesn't give you 24% attack outside of the skill like some may think, and any Nihilancy with high effect hit rate needs outside of their skill should just use something else. Walt has a lower base chance on his skill slow so it works well for him. For the low spenders we will meet again is the Battle Pass Light Cone and it gives a one time additional damage proc on basic attack or skill. The current roster doesn't really benefit from it and Walt's Light Cone will just beat it. Good Night and Sleep Wall is a gacha Light Cone but a very potent one for damage in Nihility users. It will provide much more damage than Watts Light Cone, with its 72% damage buff at S5 for the trade off of less skill damage and skill effect hit rate. For free to play, we also have Fomata, which is only good on Sampo and maybe Kafka, so not really too relevant here. And Watts Light Cone will beat it on the other Nihility units. So, if you want a good light cone with some free stats and you don't want to trade off some utility for pure damage, then Walt's light cone is nice for Walt himself. But I'd say the only one that can use it apart from him is Sampo right now. The damage is beaten by the 4 star gacha option, and other 5 star Nihility cones will power creep its utility. And I wrote this section before Incessant Rain came out, and it seems to have come true. Next up, we have Moment of Victory, which is Japard's signature light cone. It will increase the wearer's defense and effect hit rate by 24%. Increase your aggro modifier by 200%, not 100%, and increase the wearer's defense by an additional 24% when attacked until the end of their turn. Since tanks are made for tanking, and this increases taunt value, you'll have a great uptime of this massive 48% death bonus on top of effect hit rate and a crazy 595 base defense, which makes this an amazing light cone for every preservation unit, 
except perhaps March 7th if you want to use her for changing aggro. This has the highest defense bonus out of all light cones and they all scale their shields on that, as well as some damage, so it's perfect. Fire MC can abuse this effect hit rate for her taunt and Jeopard for his freeze, which is more viable at E1, as well as both of them for hitting the Bellow Bog Planar Ornament effect hit rate threshold at 50%. I'd say that this is the best standard light cone. The only problem is the amount of great light cones preservation has. For low spenders, the Battle Pass light cone is sort of sus, but day one of my new life is a gacha cone with a potent team wide defensive option to help in hard content. Landau's Choice offers the same aggro modifier with some self damage reduction at the trade off of the defense and effect hit rate. For free to play options, Textual Memories isn't that great right now, it's usable, but Defense and Amber are used in Memory of Chaos right now, and they are 3 star light cones. So for Jepard or Fire MC boost, you can definitely pick this up. Preservation has other great options, so it's not a necessary boost, and it won't improve your damage, so you won't really see too much of its effect. But it is very strong. Next we have Sleep Like the Dead, which is Yan Ching's signature light cone. The way this will work is tricky, and thanks to my friend Edison Mass Club for clearing it up for me. People think it's just a one turn buff, and that uh, it's kind of bad, but it's actually much better than people think. It will give a base very strong 30% crit damage buff, and then on a character skill or basic, will increase their crit rate by 36% for one turn if they don't crit on a hit during this attack. So as you may or may not know, attacks can be made up of multiple hits. For example, Zila's skill is actually made up of 4 different hits. So since hunt characters have multi-hit attacks, this can proc mid-attack and buff the rest of your hits in your skill. And since the buff is applied mid-turn, and some buffs like this one are funky, this will carry over to your next turn. It does have a 3 turn cooldown starting from the first turn, but since you gain it for half of your first turn, and for a full second turn, you will only have one skill of downtime on an immense crit rate buff. It's a bit weird, and it will buff some characters more than others, because multi-hit attacks don't have the same percentage of damage per hit, some will have different multipliers per hit, like Zela, does the most damage of her skill on the last hit of her skill. But it's still great, and it's obviously designed to synergize with Yanqing's strong ultimate crit buffs. He can build that low crit rate he wants to build and still crit a ton on his skills. This cone's value is subject to a lot of RNG, so it's really hard to evaluate, and it can go from doing nothing to carrying your damage. Now, Four Spender's swordplay is absolutely busted, and so is In the Night. In the Night at S1 will beat Sleep Like the Dead. For free play options, the free 4 star is alright, but needs to be played around. Stella C, however, is a fantastic and free light cone for hunt characters. It won't be better than Yan Ching's light cone if you don't get the attack percent uptime, but it's great as a stat stick, and that attack percent is immense when it's up. So, if you want to boost and lack other options, this cone can be great to pick up. Finally, we have Time Waits for No One, which is Bailu's signature light cone. It will give you some HP percent and outgoing healing percent which is great for Natasha and Bailu. It will then record your healing done and give the next ally instance of damage some extra damage depending on the healing recorded. The problem of this light cone is the stats and effect are negligible. Full Spender's post-op conversation is very strong due to its added energy regeneration rate. It also gives extra healing when you're using your ultimate. Edison Maths Club did an excellent calculation on the two. Due to energy needs, S1 of post op actually is pretty much equal as S1 of time waits for no one on Natasha, as the energy provided by post op compensates for the lower stats. With time waits for no one and the same conditions, you need an energy rope, which loses a lot of HP stats for Bailu or Natasha. In practice, however, you can get unreliable energy from other ways, so time waits for no one is okay until later superimpositions of post op conversation. For free to play players, Quid Pro Quo is such an amazing free light cone and one of the best free light cones. 16 energy every turn for an ally is very strong, and so if your healing is sufficient, Quid Pro Quo is just way more valuable than some more healing. Cornucopia is a bit cornucope, but it's also very strong for healing and similar in strength to Time Waits for No One. So I wouldn't recommend picking this one up either, I'd definitely take the 30 pulls or another light cone. So there you have it, Moment of Victory in my opinion is the best due to its raw power, but it's not a DPS increase so it's up to you. The battle isn't over is very strong, provided you have Bronya, and then the rest depends on your account and characters. If you want Drip and don't care about pulls then go ahead and spend as you like. The pulls are very nice however, 
30 pulls is a lot even if soft pity is 65 or 75. But getting towards a new limited character or light cone should prove to be more valuable, as we've seen with Incessant Rain and Welt's Light Cone, as well as the OP light cones from Zila and Jinyuan's releases. Anyway, that's it for my standard light cone review. Thanks for watching, have a go day.